I'll be looking forward to your ministry to us this evening. Our Up Love service continues next Sunday night at 8.15 for 9 o'clock and the speaker will be the Reverend Joanne McGowan, Rector of St John's Parish Church. And the special music will be provided by Mrs Paula Francie. The offering taken up this series will be shared between Barnard Seed, Molly's Ark and our own development fund. And the offering will be taken up during the last time. Thank you very much indeed for your warm welcome. It's a joy to be back with you tonight in Moira for this the first of your special services throughout the summertime. We are going to turn to our hymn again and it's number 212 if you're using a book or thine be the glory risen conquering song. Let's sing together from this lovely hymn. Thank you. Thank you 
for the privilege of singing your praise. We come to a God tonight who is worthy of honor and glory and praise. And we rightly say, yours or thine be the glory. And we come tonight to glorify your name. We thank you for that precious name of Jesus. We thank you there is a name we love to hear. We love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in our ears. It's the sweetest name on earth. And we come tonight to worship you for who you are. We come to worship you for what you have done. We thank you for your great plan of salvation. We thank you for ever leaving the splendors of glory and coming into this world of woe. We thank you for going all the way to Calvary's cross to bleed and die for us so that we, those sinners, might be brought back into our right relationship with God through his Son, the Lord Jesus. And we pray tonight that you will encourage us. We pray that you will bless us. We pray indeed that you will challenge us and speak to us, lead us and guide us. Lord, we pray that as a result of our service tonight, we might make <coughs> progress spiritually speaking. That if we don't know you, that we might come to know you. And if we do know you, that we might become more like you and grow in your grace. So we do pray for this service. We pray for Elias, he comes in a moment or two to bring us messages in song. We pray that her ministry may be a blessing to us. And then, as briefly, we would open your word a little later on. We pray that you will just speak to us through it. We thank you that the word of God is a living word. And we pray that we might be spoken to. And we pray, Lord, that whatsoever you would say to us tonight, that we might walk in the light of it. So we commit ourselves to you on this whole series of epilogue services. We pray that they will be a blessing to this community. We pray in Jesus' name with thanks, God. Amen. Now, Gilly, we're glad to have you with us tonight. And Lily's going to come now and sing two pieces, first of all, in Christ alone, and then no longer slaves. Thank you so much. Oh, 
Thank you so much, Ailey. We look forward to you singing a little bit later on in our epilogue service. Now, we're going to read together from the Word of God and just as an introduction, let me remind you whenever you go to the doctor, so often in order to discern exactly where you are so far as your health is concerned, he or she will take your temperature. And that will tell them an awful lot about your physical health. Now, we want to think about temperature tonight. And so we are going to read three different verses. The three portions of Scripture are not connected in any other way, other than that they tell about temperature. And that's what we want to move on. The first one that we are going to read together is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, and in verse 12. Matthew 24 and verse 12. And here we read, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax or grow cold. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax or grow cold. Matthew 24 is one of the portions of Scripture one of the passages that talk about the coming again or the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll speak a little bit about that in a moment or two. Then, secondly, the reading is from Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. And here we read, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Read it again. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I am worried that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. That is written to a church in the book of Revelation. It's a church in Laodicea, which is in modern-day Turkey. It was there at that time, it's a first century church, and Jesus was speaking to them, and he told them their temperature was neither hot nor cold, they were in between. And then thirdly, we are going to read together this time from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and verse 32. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 32. And they said one, and they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and <clears throat> while he opened to us the scriptures? And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scripture, their hearts were burning, so their temperature was hot. So we have three different temperatures mentioned in the Bible, so far as our lives are concerned spiritually. And just as the doctor can discern how healthy a person you are physically by taking your temperature, depending on your condition, so I believe, depending on which of these three temperatures we sit at spiritually, depends on how healthy we are from a spiritual point of view. So it's a little spiritual health check that we're going to do in the next few minutes. In order for you to remember that, you have probably come, as I have tonight, in a fairly modern vehicle. Well, you have at least three temperature gauges. Number one, you have a temperature gauge that reads relatively cold because it gives the temperature 
outside. You don't need to pay much attention to it unless it's in the winter time when it's frosty. And whenever it gets to about four degrees, it'll go bleep, 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 to remind you to be careful because the roads out there might be slippery and you need to take precaution. It's measuring a relatively cold temperature. Then you have the one for the driving compartment inside your vehicle. And depending on how hot you like it, you will probably set it in about 20 degrees or 21 degrees. And in modern vehicles now, you can have all this climate control and you can be warmer than your passenger because you can set it that way that your passenger and the driver have two different temperatures. It's a sort of what we would call a comfortable temperature. A sort of a temperature that you could sort of have go to sleep if you make it too hot. It's just nice. It's tepid. It's in between. It's, it's comfortable. And then you have another temperature gauge that's the most important one of the three of them. And it looks usually something like your fuel gauge. Now, if you look after the temperature gauge, that one, the fuel gauge will look after itself. Don't worry too much about that. It will let you know whenever it's empty. But this one here, this temperature gauge, that one gives you the temperature of the water in your engine. Now, of course, within the cylinders it's much hotter, but the water and the water jackets around the, the cylinders usually sits in or about 85 to 90 degrees. That's fairly hot. It's only 10 degrees below boiling point. And so it's a hot temperature. So you have three different temperature gauges. One, mildly cold. One, comfortable in between. And one, that's hot. And so we want to ask ourselves the question tonight, what temperature, spiritually speaking, do we run our lives at? In Matthew 24, we read about those who run their temperature, their lives at a cold temperature. I hope this doesn't include you or include me tonight. Because there are two reasons why you might read cold on your spiritual temperature gauge. Number one is that you have never ever come to that place where you have really trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You don't really know him at all. If that is so, yes, your temperature gauge will read cold because there is no warmth whatsoever, because there is no contact between your heart and the heart of the living God. There's nothing to warn you whatsoever. That's one reason. And there are so many in that category outside the church and sometimes inside it as well. The other reason is because of what this verse in Matthew 24 said. In verse 12, it said that in the last days, now we know that the Lord Jesus is coming again. We have talked about that for generations. And we have said his coming is soon. And yet with all, it is stretched out a long time. That means it's even more soon now than what it was whenever we started to talk about it. And we do need to remember that God's timing and our timing is different. However, I believe even in our timing, the coming again of the Lord Jesus may be sooner than we think. And the Bible says at that time, in those last days before Jesus returns, that the love of many shall wax or grow cold. <coughs> that means 
there was a time when people were warmer toward God. Their spiritual temperature was higher than what it is now. Because of all the pressure that's out there in the big wide world that squeezes in upon the church, that squeezes in upon the people of God, trying to get them to do all sorts of things wrong, is dressed up as right, and everybody does what seems right in the sight of their own eyes, and even if it's wrong, they dress it up as right and do it anyway. And as a result of that pressure that's squeezing on us all the time, it's very easy for your spiritual temperature to drop. And that is what this verse is talking about. Possible to grow cold. Of course, we can turn to many signs within the Bible that will happen before the Lord Jesus comes again. Some of them have been applicable for many years, the likes of what we read in Matthew 24, 6 and 7, nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines, and then it says pestilences. I'll take that wee word in a minute. And earthquakes in diverse places, in a diversity of places. Now we know, of course, much of that is coming to pass and has come to pass. We think about Russia and Ukraine, we think about Israel and Hamas and all the rest of it. And we have talked about that for years. However, uh, after all we have been through over this past two or three years, I was thinking about that word pestilences. And I looked it up in an ordinary Oxford dictionary. Here's what it says. It says a pestilence is a contagious or infectious devastating epidemic which affects the whole community. Huh? Wouldn't you think that's exactly what we have come through and we don't know what will be next? A contagious or infectious devastating epidemic which affects the whole community. We also read in 2 Timothy 3 and 1, which is another portion of scripture that talks about the second coming. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. I looked up the word perilous in the same dictionary, and it says exposed to imminent risk of ruin or disaster. Exposed to imminent risk of ruin and disaster. And so we could go on talking about the signs that are more relevant to 2024 since 2019. Things are shaping up, I believe, to put in place the coming again of the Lord Jesus. The hymn writer said, Jesus is coming, shout the glad word. He's coming for those who are redeemed by his blood. He's coming to reign as a glorified Lord Jesus is coming again. And so we could go on. These are great days to talk about climate change. Now, there might be nothing in this whatsoever. I throw it out there just for you to go away and think about it and do a wee bit of research if you want to. If you want to, if you're interested enough in that type of thing, to do so. One Peter three and ten tells me that the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now, whether or not that is in any way linked to climate change. I don't know. They tell me that the carbon dioxide from the engine of my motor did the ozone and is doing the ozone layer damage and so on and that's why we're going down hybrid and electric vehicles and all the rest of it. That might well be so. I'm not going to that and give you my personal opinion on it. It wouldn't be worth listening to anyway. But it does say 
that the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And you know what I know? That we don't get the frosts that we used to get from some of us for the younger. Not bad enough, we do not, because I remember whenever I was a young fellow, diesel fuel at that time, there was no oil in it to keep it from freezing. And we used to have to go out to lorries in cold, frosty mornings and try to get the diesels from a, a solid back in a liquid. Now that wouldn't be the case today. But even we were using that old diesel that we used then, it wouldn't freeze. Because we don't have the cold temperatures that we had 40 years ago. It's interesting, isn't it? And just beware, because the Bible tells us that toward the end of time when Jesus is about to return. The love of many shall wax cold. So there's a wee warning in there. Don't be included in that number. We don't want to be there. Number two then, we have this in-between temperature. We have a lukewarm temperature. And we want to look at that for a moment or two. It's found there in Revelation 3.15. I've already told you that was a church that Jesus was writing to. Remember, he used the Apostle John and the end of Patmos to record what he wanted to share with the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3. And these people in the place called Laodicea at that time, Jesus says to them, I know your works that you are neither cold or hot. You're just in between. And he says, I would really rather that you were either one or the other, rather than lukewarm. Tepid. Because he says that temperature, that tepid temperature, it, it, it makes me sick. That's what it means when it says, I will spew you out of my mouth. Now, whenever Jesus uses illustrations, it just hits the people he's talking to between the eyes. Because he always uses temp uh, 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 illustrations that are really suitable to his congregation. And these people knew what it was to be lukewarm. And they knew what it meant when he talked about a lukewarm temperature. Very quickly, the reason being is there were two places beside it. One was called Hierapolis. They were known for producing hot, hot springs. And that water from Hierapolis was brought or piped or carried, not sure, sure, sure how, to the Anasea. By the time it got there, it cooled down. Similarly, there was another place near later saying called Colossae. We know a bit about it from the book of Colossians in the New Testament. They were known for producing cold, cold water. It was piped or brought or carried also in the later saying, but by the time we got there it warmed up a wee bit. So the cold water from Colossae had warmed up by the time it got to later saying, and the hot water from Hierapolis had cooled down by the time it got there. They knew what Jesus meant whenever he talked about being lukewarm. Do you know what their problem was? Why were they lukewarm? Because material things had taken over. They were a very materialistic people, well off. And we thank God for all the things that we have that our parents didn't have. But Jesus says, beware. Because you can come to the point where you depend on such things and you become so materialistically minded that you're only lukewarm spiritually. And that's what Jesus says to these people. And it's actually to those people that Jesus went on to say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. It was to those people. That text that we preach the gospel from was actually written to a church 
who were only lukewarm. Jesus says, I don't want you to stay there. Because in that little letter to the church in Laodicea, the key word comes at the end of verse 19 in Revelation 3, whenever he just says, repent. Repent. And then he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. The possibility of being cold, like that wee temperature that goes bleep, bleep, bleep to you. Being lukewarm, just comfortable in our material surroundings. Just like that in between intermediate temperature that we use in the can of water in the driving quarter inside the vehicle. But then thirdly, there's a there's a hot temperature. And with this we close. The hot temperature, it is found <coughs> there regarding the folk who were on the road to Emmaus. Do you remember after uh, G after the, the, the resurrection? Uh, there was confusion over the resurrection. Suffice to say that. Do you remember Jesus had appeared to the ladies that first Easter day? Do you remember the angel had said, he is not here, he is risen? Do you remember Peter had gone looking for the Lord Jesus? There was confusion. And there were two disciples of the Lord Jesus who were confused. And they did not take on board that Jesus had been raised from the dead, as he said he would. And so we read that one of them was called Cleopas. We don't know who the other one was. Some suggest it could have been his wife. That may be so. The Bible doesn't say it was. doesn't say it wasn't. We know there was another disciple anyway, along with Cleopas. And they were heading seven miles back from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They were downhearted. They were disappointed. They were downcast. They were almost in a sort of a spiritual depression. Why? Because they had been putting their trust and faith in the one who was now dead. And the Bible says, as they went to Emmaus, after the resurrection, then someone drew alongside and went with them. The Bible says that they were kept from recognizing who he was. He came to where they were staying, we gathered most likely. He ate with them, he broke bread with them, and then their eyes were opened as to who he was. And what did they say? They said one to another, because after that they recognized him, then he was taken out of their presence. And the Bible says, they said, one to another, did not our hearts burn within us? When did their heart burn? When Jesus was close by. And so they made their way back to Jerusalem tell the rest of the disciples Jesus is alive he's risen he appeared to us and their determination was to love him to live for him and to serve him their hearts burned within them when 
Ja, weil der ja gespielt ist, der Kloschen ist auf dem Arsch da. As we close this evening, are you living close to the Master? Do you know him? Do you love him like these two disciples? Do you live for him? Do you serve him? Would your spirit, your temperature be described as hot? Are you able to do it more? Are you cold? Oh, what a blessed series of epilogue services these would be of some who are cold or lukewarm would get into that close relationship with the Lord Jesus so that their hearts were born. Because someone has said, when the church, that's the people you need, <coughs> Are on fire for God, the world will come to see it. Well, I trust tonight, our desire will be above all else to love Him, live for Him, and tell others about Him. That will be the case if we are living for Him and our hearts are burning hot for God. I trust that will be our experience. Now, he is going to come again, and this time she's going to sing for us. No longer, no, she's not. Great are you, Lord. Is that right, Eli? Thank you, Eli. Uh, and then we'll have our closing hymn and offering. Thank you, Eli. Great are you. Oh, oh, oh.
shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will say,
again, we thank you for your help given in this service. We thank you for your speaking voice through your word and through Eli's messages in song. And we pray and thank you for the offering that we have received. We thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And we pray that you will use this in the three-way split that has been mentioned to us to the benefit of these causes. We pray, Lord, that you will apply your word to our hearts and help us to make adjustments if that is needed. And we pray that you will go with us to our homes in safety. And we ask that the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, grant that that blessing may rest and abide with us now and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.